Sixer Nation, what up? RB here, joined again by my guy Sean Bernard. Another day out here in Las Vegas for NBA Summer League. And yesterday we finally got to go to the Thomas and Max Center. We explored, we have a lot of in-depth behind-the-scenes coverage. We'll have more content coming out. But man, what a game. Sixers get a W. But overall, in my opinion, just like an unbelievable experience, 10 out of 10, I would recommend to anybody. 100%. An all-time day from a content standpoint, from just a sports fan standpoint, and from a Sixers standpoint of breaking down things. So a ton to get into with this team, some guys that stood out in our overall experience. So very excited to dive in, RB. Absolutely, man. And even beyond the games, like you said, just walking around, seeing the people, you know, meeting guys. I mean, we're, we're standing up on the concourse, and literally Darvin Ham goes walking by. Uh, we met countless players, um, even at the hotel at night. There were so many guys walking around. Maybe we'll get into all that, and we'll give you a sneak peek into some of the coolest people we met. But what an unreal game yesterday. It felt like a very dry one to begin, and out of nowhere, the Sixers come storming back, and, and what an ending to that game. It was tight, but a couple players really stood up and maybe made a little bit of a case to make the roster as well. Yeah, absolutely. And at the top of that list, Kiva Luma has been the guy that has helped his case for sure. And he finished yesterday with 19 points and eight rebounds, added a block and a steal, and really took over the game for a stretch. So I think he's the guy that, with little expectation going in, has really opened some eyes, likely changed the trajectory of his career, and may have earned himself a contract just yesterday. Yeah, and, you know, we were talking during the game. I, I mean, I know a little bit about him, but, you know, it seems like this guy's been around for some time. Like, he's had an interesting journey playing overseas, doing a lot of different things. And here he finds himself, honestly, with a good chance to maybe make the roster. Do I think he's going to? Well, it depends what happens in the next couple games. But based on what we saw yesterday... This dude has some skills that could definitely translate to the NBA. Absolutely. And that last two-way spot is still available. I get the skepticism because he is on the older side. He had a really trajectory, a really interesting trajectory. A late bloomer who's just started playing basketball in high school. Started off his college career at Wofford, transferred out, played a little overseas. But the bottom line is the guy can hoop. And at the end of the day, he's a little bit of a stretch big man, could play a little power forward. I like his game. And to me, talent wins out. So even with the age, I think he's worth taking a chance on. Yeah, and he's starting to make a real case to make the roster. And what did he have, 18 and 9 yesterday? 19 and 8. 19 and 8. Again, excuse us, guys. We don't have the professional setup. We're still trying to work on a video to get the background. There's a beautiful Ferris wheel out here. But the lighting, it's, it's hard to figure out. We're just trying to do this the best we can and figuring it out as we go. But Kiva Luma, in our opinion, has been the guy that has really skyrocketed into that next tier and maybe could make the roster. So shout out to him. We could talk about Jared McCain, but just as a little insight here, we're going to be dropping a separate video. We got to go behind the scenes with media access and interview Jared McCain ourselves. So we'll have clips coming out from that. We'll talk about him as both a player and just a person and our experience as well. Because like I said, we got to meet a lot of people yesterday. But let's go and jump into Ricky Council because you know he's been the main guy here in NBA Summer League for the Sixers. He's probably going to make the roster. Yeah, I thought he had a pretty good game yesterday. Yeah, I thought he looked like the best player on the floor, and that's what you hope for for a guy that's a little more seasoned than a lot of these players that are in this summer league opportunity. Finished yesterday's game with 24 points, 6 rebounds, was a plus 16 on the game, and you felt his impact on both ends of the floor. There's this physicality, this just like level of like hardworking determination on the floor that I really respect in his game. Had a Got a technical for an awesome dunk and hanging on the rim. Yo, that is a crazy call. <laughs> Everybody in the stands was booing. And by the way, a lot of Sixer <laughs> fans here, more than you would think like Shout a out. lot of Sixer jerseys around mm -hmm. but um you know when Ricky throws that down he gets called for a tech we're sitting there like you know a couple rows up are you kidding me for hanging on the rim in a summer league game that is absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, let the boys have fun. Let the boys play, but it was worth it. You know, you take that 10 times out of 10. So shout out Ricky for bringing it. He's good for some highlight reel. And I know you've mentioned it plenty, but get this man in a dunk contest. Yo, he is absolutely incredible. My One of my favorite plays yesterday was that play where he, I think he stole it like half court and he just took it all the way and, and did it a wild. I don't know. It wasn't a windmill, but it's like a reverse. Yeah, it was like a reverse dunk and the whole crowd went crazy. Um, Man, Ricky's exciting it. A couple step back threes and just a couple plays where you really start to see that next level progression. Like, and the confidence. Damn. Yeah. yeah, like he he could be uh, a guy going forward. So, yeah, I'm excited about Ricky Council. He's an absolute dog. What did he finish with? 24 points and six rebounds in yesterday's game. 
Shot 7 of 17 from the field, but the confidence for sure is there. That His th one three-pointer only hit one three, but it was an impressive little step back, get to his spot. So I know I mentioned wanting him to reel it in a little from a stylistic standpoint, but this is the stage to do it. That This is op his opportunity to show what he can truly do. He won't have the opportunity to be like a primary player for a lot of cases and likely for an on all honesty, probably the rest of his career that he will be more of a role player type guy. So you know what? Soak it up, take the moment and shoot as many shots as you want. Ricky Council's incredible. We also saw another undrafted free agent at the end of the day, Terquavion Smith. That's right. I'm like, man, Sixers legend, Turk. Uh, wish he was still with these Sixers. But a lot of guys making their case and actually sitting right in front of us was a special someone. So we're going to talk about that in just a second, as well as a couple more observations from yesterday. But before we do that, a word from our sponsor. Shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Southern New Hampshire University. You know, funny enough, years ago, I enrolled in college trying to figure out how to obtain a degree in sports. But as a first generation college student, I had little to no experience, really no guidance at all. And an SNHU would have been a perfect opportunity for someone like me. And maybe it can benefit you as their online sports management program lets you turn a passion for sports into a degree. You'll learn about the business and economics of sports, sports management principles, and how to gather and analyze data. This degree can help you prepare for many careers like an athletic director, sports information director, marketing manager, and other exciting roles in the sports industry. You'll even be able to tap into SNHU's network of grads, help establish those connections with individuals working in sports-related organizations. SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country. They are radically affordable and their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation. So do yourself a favor, go down to the description, click the link, go to snhu.edu slash Philly take and request free info about the program. A real person will even schedule to hop on a call with you and discuss how the program can benefit you personally. Once again, check it out snhu.edu slash philly take all right man so as i was saying yesterday uh nick nurse actually sitting a couple rows in front of us at one point tyrese maxey actually walked over dapped him up there were so many people like sam cassell daryl morey uh, daryl morey was there we saw him uh who else there it was a couple guys sitting with nurse right a couple yeah. assistant coaches Elton brand was there a couple Elton of the brand, assistant coaches and rich paul rich paul, rich paul yeah. was there Gave a nice dap up to Daryl Morey and Nick Nurse, which, you know, I do think is important. So worth noting there after the Tyrese Maxey celebration with his contract and all that. So good relations there. It's good to see. Yeah, Tyrese Maxey, he, man, his smile just brightens up the whole freaking arena. Like, he, he, you can spot him anywhere. He did a little uh, press conference or a little interview on the broadcast. This guy's awesome, man. I'm so happy he's in Philly. And I know the word aura gets thrown around a lot, but the dude's a superstar, man. Like, you see when he walks across, the kid's screaming for autographs, cheering for him and everything. Tyrese Maxey has made it into, like, the real deal superstar of the NBA type level of attention to him. Absolutely, man. So, right now, our top two guys, like we said, Ricky Council and Keeve Aluma. So, mm -hmm. those two are really popping out to us so far. But another guy that we, you know, highlighted yesterday, it can't go without talking about his game and that is a damn bona he had five blocks again yesterday and me and sean are just sitting there every play we're like does this guy slow down he never slows down never he's incredible 100 percent. and yeah he finished with 8.7 rebounds and five blocks it's a pretty good stat line for a guy that's backup center numbers and as you mentioned the work rate in the motor is just off the charts he does not have an off switch his battery never gets uncharged and there was even a play yesterday which it was a bad turnover on his part where there was a miscommunication he went to give it back to the guard the guard went the other way ended up with a turnover and a clear path for the dunk the other way this man was full speed sprinting did not quite get there for the block but just the level of effort and commitment jumps off the page for me there is not a play that he quit on throughout the entire game he's also getting better at kind of the feel for basketball skills there was one cool moment where he set a double screen originally uh, screened for the ball handler and then moved and screened another man to basically free up a free layup and i saw like the immediate recognition from ricky council the fourth there so clearly something that they're working on there he's starting to get it it feels like i love Adembona. i'm in on him i i think he should make the roster and um there was one play too, or a couple plays where I just I saw his switch ability as a defender too. Like his feet move very well, and even for his size, and he is very athletic. Like you say, jumping off the page. Like people talk about jumping off the screen, he literally was jumping in front of my eyes. Like yeah. he's everywhere, and he's busting it down the floor, you know, to try to get a chase down block. It's crazy. Um, but man, like even with his size and his strength, 
he moves very, very well. Yeah, a hundred percent. And they didn't do as strict of a zone as was the case in the Salt Lake City. So got kind of an opportunity to see him guard in space or take on a man in on the perimeter in a way that wasn't truly the case. He also got another three second call, which I do hate. That's something that we're gonna have to cut out there. This is now every summer league game that he has got a defensive three second call. But you know what? We are nitpicking. It is summer league. That's gonna be something I'm gonna be super up in arms about, but just something to keep an eye on. One last thing uh, before we go to a couple final players. I didn't notice this with the other games. I don't know if you did because we stayed for all the games. But the Sixers bench, the oh, yeah. energy was it, it was insane. Like, I've never seen anything like that. It was spreading throughout the entire arena. Like, every possession, the whole Sixers bench is jumping up, jumping on the floor, losing their minds. It was absolutely infectious. What did you think about that? A hundred percent. I thought particularly on the defensive end. They're up there clapping when guys are getting deflections, getting in people's grill. The, the, the bench is cheering them on, getting into it. That is infectious on a team. And I know I kind of mentioned to you while we were sitting there yesterday, but it feels like the Sixers team and this Sixers organization is really paying attention to improving the culture, to having the standard of not just good vibes, but competitiveness and people just being on the same page. I think that is an area that was overlooked for a long period of time in the Sixers organization. And it's cool to see like a focus of it back on the table absolutely man um couple final guys anybody else you want to bring up i know jeff Dalton had a pretty good game yesterday yeah who Je else jeff Dalton ending with 18 points eight assists and five rebounds there that's probably the biggest guy that stood out we only got 14 minutes out of justin edwards which i would have liked to see a little bit more from jared mccain with 11 points and six rebounds there two steals as well as you mentioned we will get into him so i think we hit on the biggest guys to stand out there for me i think ricky council and kiva luma were the big winners of yesterday absolutely and uh hope they can continue that moving forward we're not going to be at the game today but we will go back tomorrow for all of them. The Sixers play, who is it, the Blazers? Uh, yes, yes. The Blazers. And we did get to watch them as well. We saw Klingon and a bunch of other guys. Um, let's end it off with something fun, though. We, we went to the hotels yesterday, and we were literally running through. I'm talking like tens, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 people, like recognizable players, coaches, media. Who's the coolest guy that you saw or, or that we ran into last night? Sham Sharanio was very cool seeing him uh, standing over there. We did uh, run into Caleb Martin as well, which was sick. Got a little just dap up with him and said, what's up? Welcome to Philadelphia. So I think that's probably the one. The Caleb Martin takes the cake for me. But, I mean, we saw Mike Conley uh, strolling around, Chris Finch, Will Hardy, the jazz head coach. There was just the whole NBA <laughs> world is here. It is unbelievable. And, and before we were getting a leave, too, OG Ananobi that's right. was rolling through. CJ McCollum. It was absolutely insane. Tommy Alter. Tommy Alter. I, I think Shams was the craziest one. Like, just getting to you know, say what's up to him. And we told Caleb Martin, like, we are happy to have you here. And this team is going for a chip. And he was very happy and, and you know, gave us the time and didn't, you know, dismiss us or anything like that. Rocking the same bucket hat. Absolutely. Rocking the bucket hat. That's how we <laughs> noticed him. That's how Sean noticed him. But anyway, man, a um, lot of more cool stuff to come. And most importantly, like I said, our experience with Jared McCain was incredible. So we'll get to that in the next couple of videos. But. Shout out to everybody for tapping in, man. Any final thoughts on yesterday? Uh, just an awesome day. It's very cool to just be in the mix of this NBA world and checking things out. So we're going to have a ton more content coming out. Stay uh, posted. Check out the socials if you want a sneak peek for some of this interviews uh, with Jared McCain and a couple other stuff we got going on. But make sure to stay tuned for that tomorrow. Absolutely, man. Incredible experience so far, and we'll see what else we have coming for you. But appreciate everybody. Be sure to like the video and comment down below if there's anything else you want to see. And turn those noties on so you don't miss any of the content. And with that being said, we will catch you on the next one. Peace.